Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Carlos Morillo. Uh, we today we are going to be performing a live demo for uh, Raman Instrument. Uh, for those that they are coming back, uh, welcome and thank you very much for sharing this time uh, every Tuesday at 2 p.m. with our webinar series. For those that they are, have been first time, uh, welcome and I hope that uh, you can have the chance to join the coming webinars and also the past uh, events. Uh, I just want to remind you, I'm going to be spending something like 40, 45 minutes in this uh, live demo. And at the end or during the whole demo, you can be asking questions in the uh, questions, questions tab. And uh, at the end, I'm going to be answering the questions. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that uh, for those that don't know JASCO, JASCO is the Japanese, the Japan spectroscopy company known in Japan as a Nihon Bunko. Our R&D and manufacturing sites are in Hachioji, Japan. Uh, the founding members of uh, JASCO are Yoshio Fujioka and Dr. Shinichiro Tomonaga, who shared the Nobel Prize in Physics and in 1975 with uh, Dr. Richard Feynman for uh, quantum electrodynamics. Uh, some of our products, uh, spectroscopy and chromatography products are in this slide. I uh, just want to invite you again to watch the previous uh, webinars, especially those related with Raman, uh, fundamentals and also uh, imaging for uh, Raman, so you can have a better understa understanding of the of this uh, webinar. You can go on back and visit them. Uh, so, so the overview for today, I'm going to be, of course, talking about the JASCO Raman spectrometers and specifically on the uh, 4500, that is the instrument that we are going to uh, demo today. I'm going to be presenting uh, three different uh, techniques uh, of the Raman microscope. One is the what we call the quick Raman imaging, that is the QRI for fast mapping. The sample that I'm going to be using for that is uh, polymer beads uh, made of polymethyl acrylate or PMMA and polystyrene. The second uh, is the advanced search function that is uh, designed for those samples that have a lot of particles and sometimes the user have to uh, follow and try to test all these samples. With this function, it, it can be done automatically. I'm going to be using the same sample of the sample uh, polymer beads, but an extra uh, particle of TiO2 is going to be present and I'm going to measure it just to uh, make the difference between the whole uh, sample. And the last sample that I'm going to be uh, demoing is the surface scanning image, that is the SSI for tilted or uneven surfaces, very rough surfaces, for example, geological samples. Uh, okay, so. The, these are the different uh, Raman spectrometers. Uh, we have the RMP, that is our portable uh, Raman probe, the standard model, that is the NRS 4500, and the Hyatt models 55 and 75. The NRS series, you can, a uh, user can use them for the hub high uh, speed imaging. The focal length of the 4500 is 20 uh, centimeters. With this instrument, we use only one detector, and it's uh, the CCD or the EMCCD. For more details, please review the webinar about imaging. This is more a uh, model for quality control environment and also academia. It can be used for microplastics, especially this uh, search function is very useful 
for those uh, researchers that they are working with microplastic of very uh, tiny particles in the body waters. Uh, we also can be used for multilayer materials, carbon materials, impurity, and biological samples. Uh, so these, uh, of course, the 4500 is controlled by uh, the software and computer. I'm going to be showing the software of the instrument. This is our uh, main instrument. It's a compact, uh, our most common compact uh, ramen system. And uh, it have a, a very interesting uh, features, and is uh, is a very automated instrument that makes it very uh, useful, very easy to use for any novice uh, user, especially for uh, people that doesn't have the background in spectroscopy or for uh, academic environments. It, the standard configuration of the NRS4500 is either is only is only one laser. It could be 532, 785. This is the standard uh, configuration. It can have up to three lasers. Uh, the standard configuration for the 532 is the 900 uh, grading and 400 for the 785 uh, nanometer laser. The the standard configuration is a CCD detector of an is air cool. Also have a stage that is an auto stage with a joystick. The Rayleigh re rejection filter is the edge uh, filter. And we have options for the notch of the or the E grade. A standard lens or is objective lens in the visible range 5, 20, and 100 uh, X. And also, those can be uh, placed uh, in the near IR as an option. The standard wave range, uh, wave number range, it goes from 8,000 to 100 uh, wave number if the edge filter is used. But if we use the E grade filter, we can go to those uh, low wave number up to 50 uh, wave number. Uh, some of the automated uh, features are the automated alignment of the laser, also the what we call the Raman path, and the Raman path is just the whole uh, optical path that the Raman signal travel from the sample up to the detector that can be automatically uh, uh, aligned. Also, uh, we have imaging lenses, and those are two different imaging lenses that match the objective lens magnification. Uh, and as a consequence, we have an instrument that has an excellent uh, signal to noise, and I'm going to show that in a couple of slides. So some of the advantages of the NRS uh, 4500, as I said before, the standard is 532 and 785, but we have different options that goes from 405 to that 405 is more in the uh, blue region, and we can go up to the 1064, that is the uh, near infrared uh, region. 457, 532, and 785 are highlighted in red. These are the standard way, uh, laser lines that they are used when we add up to three different lasers. But of course, the other uh, lines are optional. Uh, for the instrument uh, that have a 1064 nanometers, the detector that is used is the in-gas detector. In those cases, for those samples that they are very, uh, that they fluoresce a lot, and especially for biological samples, the in gas detector with the 1064 is recommended. Uh, NRS 4500 can hold only one uh, detector, so that would be a fully dedicated uh, 4500, 4500 instrument. If uh, some user would like to have two detectors, you have to move up to the 5500 that is our research grade 
uh, instrument. Uh, the laser, uh, the instrument can hold up to three different lasers. And of course, we have an uh, automatic selection for the uh, relay uh, rejection filter when the laser is changed to a different line automatically the rejection filter is going to change to the specific uh, laser line for the special resolution we can see when the 532 laser 100 objective is used and a pinhole uh, slit uh, is used for uh, of 17 micron uh, this is the special resolution that that we can have Right. Uh, the whole instrument is class one uh, laser safety. That means that the instrument is closed and locked. Uh, when the instrument is performing the measurement of the uh, Raman signal, of course, to avoid any damage uh, when or any hazard when the laser is used. Specifically, we mentioned that in our first uh, Raman seminar. So, some of the unique features from the NRS 45 system is uh, the laser spot can be observed on the sample, so it helps when the user is making the uh, measurement. Also, the, it can be switched between the measurement and observation uh, mode and uh, the measurement sample or accessory up to 80 uh, millimeter thick. I'm going to show you in the next slide how that works. And the instrument have a high stiffness, so that is going to minimize any drift uh, introduced to the instrument by vibration or thermal. Uh, is going to be a really reliable uh, measurement. So this is the larger stages and samples, and this is what I mentioned in the previous slide. This is the 80 millimeters uh, stage. With this space here is uh, enabled to uh, introduce heating stage or cryostats or environmental cells or even for high uh, and tall uh, samples we can use these uh, deep stage that they have a separation of 80 millimeters so the instrument has a high uh, signal to noise to noise ratio is because uh, what I'm showing here is the is an schematic of how other manufacturers uh, build their instruments. There is only one imaging lens. That means when a high uh, objective lens or a low objective lens is used, uh, the same imaging lens remains even when there is different uh, focal points. And on top, uh, for the high objective lens, we can see that there is a maximized measurement of the light. But when a low objective lens is used, on the top we can see that because of the different focal point, there is a, a, a loss in the light that is measured, and this light is no other than the Raman signal. The solution to that from JASCO is that we have a switching imaging lens that they are going to switch automatically when we go from low or to high objective lens. And actually, there is no, the focal points is going to change depending on the objective lens, the, the focal point from the imaging lens. So that means that there is no uh, light loss and is going to result in a high signal to noise uh, instrument. So the summary before I start with the, uh, talking about the instrument is that uh, we have uh, an instrument that have a class one laser uh, safety with Raman, and this is one of the Ram, uh, one of the advantages to use Raman is the it's, it, it, we can easily go to the low wave number region. It's not like FTIR that 
to add those uh, optics is, is, is a different hardware with the RAM and we can go easily to the low wave number. Uh, this instrument has a high uh, signal to noise uh, ratio due to the selection of the optical lens that is going to change automatically with the change of the of the magnification lens uh, change in the we can up, put up to three different lasers in the instrument and the spectral resolution is a standard is two wave number per pixel uh, so i just want to talk about uh to the measurement samples the first uh sample or the first technique that i'm going to use is the quick raman imaging that is the qri for this uh, technique i'm going to use the polymer uh beads of pmma and polystyrene uh these uh are something around like 10 microns i'm going to be using uh, the 532 laser with a 900 uh grading a groove uh, grading. The second uh, measurement that I'm going to be performing is the advanced sample search. And for this uh, technique, I'm going to be using the same samples, but I'm going to move to a location where I have some TiO2 uh, particles. And I'm going to use this uh, technique to easily identify and measure different particles and they are going to be uh, identified while the measurement is done. Like you can see in the lower part of the slide uh, where it says like the measurement and qualitative analysis are performed simultaneously. When the measurement is done, we are going to be able to identify the particles because I'm going to up, up, uh, upload a a database that already have the different uh, Raman spectrum. And the last uh, technique that I'm going to use is the surface scan imaging or SSI, SSI. And what this technique is just doing is moving the stage up and down and in X and Y to have the maximum focus in a specific point and to have the maximum uh, Raman signal. So that means that we can measure any sample uh, with uh, different uh, topographies. So usually when other manufacturers use the uh, autofocus, the instrument is going to scan the surface, but it's going to be at the same height. For the 3D imaging, uh, the stage is going to be doing the scanning at the same uh, at the same height, and that is how the image is constructed. But in the case of SSI, what we are going to do is first uh, scan the surface. The surface is going to store with all the x, y, and z uh, coordinates, and then the stage is going to move to that coordinate, and the measurement is going to be performed. So the, to do the SSI, what we are going to do first is just take images at different heights and then the, an image is going to be composed. And we can observe this image in the 2D dimension uh, image, also 3D. And the Raman imaging and the mapping is going to be constructed in the uh, 2D image. With that, I'm going to move with the live uh, demo. So what you can see in the webcam is the structure inside uh, the instrument. This instrument have three different uh, objective lens, 5, 20, 100. Also, I have an extra 50x with a long working distance. Uh, 
the 5x have the longest uh, working distance, but uh, it have a numerical aperture of uh, 0 0.1. The 20x is uh, three millimeter working distance, and the ni and then na that is the numerical aperture for this objective lens is 0 0.4, and finally 100x is 0 0.9 numerical aperture and in this aperture we have the uh, we can say that we can measure more Raman signal with this uh, objective lens. This is the automated stage and we have what I mentioned we have the long uh, distance uh, of the deep stage so we can add different accessories, uh, hit stage, cryostat and environmental stage, and also a uh, long uh, or tall uh, samples. What you see in the screen now is the Spectrum Manager. The Spectrum Manager is the platform of all JASCO instruments. Uh, on top, you are going to find always the instrument. In this, I have uh, three different Raven uh, connected to this computer. Uh, below, always, we are going to find the analysis software. And basically, the one that I'm going to be using today is the micro imaging analysis. That is the software for the Raman measurement and uh, Raman uh, images. Okay, so this is our micro imaging uh, measurement uh, software. There are a lot of icons on top, but the ones that I'm going to be using today are these two on, on the top, that is monitor sample and also a uh, sample measurement. Below that, there is uh, another tab that is called measurement uh, parameters. And the two, one, the two tabs that I'm going to be using today is the standard where we can control exposure time, accumulations, uh, and the range of the, the wave number range uh, for the measurement. The other one is the configuration where we can select the grading, laser, uh, the detector I can work on the different settings of the detector. Uh, the slit, if uh, if I click in this slit, we can see uh, different seven, seven different slits. Uh, the ones, uh, the smaller ones are the pinholes that it comes in a circular shape and the other, there are four others that they come in a rect rectangular shape. And those are like 50, uh, one example is 50 by 800 uh, micrometers. So these type of slit uh, allows to pass more signal to the detector, and that is the signal that goes to the grading. Also, we can control the laser intensity. We have different levels of laser intensity from 0 0.001 to 100. Uh, we can check the objective rejection filter, and below that we have the microscope parameters like illumination, the microscope, we can dis, uh, choose to show the laser spot or the C stage. So now let's close the. Uh, the door of the instrument. And now what we can see here is the. In the image is the polymeric bits. Uh, since this is a automated stage, one of the cool features that we have in the Raman instruments is the uh, what we call the multi-image. So when I click in this multi-image, I can create a mosaic of three by three images. So these uh, nine images mosaic 
is uh, it's going to save all the coordinates. So when I collect this image that is here in what we call the multi multi uh, image, when I click in that tab, actually I can uh, zoom in and zoom out the image. So when I double click in any of these large uh, mosaic, when I double click in that image, my standard preview is going to move to that location. I go back to the multi and double click there and I go. So especially for those users or those researchers that are using that they are measuring uh, microplastics or very small particles, this uh, function is, is very, very useful. Of course, I just did the three by three. We have five by five, seven by seven, or a specific area that is much more larger. Okay, so the first measurement that I'm going to make is the QRI. The, so for that, uh, I already low up load up my uh, parameters. So I just open uh, here. I have uh, different files for each uh, parameter. So I just have to click there and I just go back to the previous parameters so you can uh, speed up uh, your measurement. So I already have like a gradient of 900 green laser. Uh, I selected already the slit. Uh, the power of the laser that I'm going to use 25, 25% of the laser. I mean the uh, 100x uh, objective lens. I'm going to use 25 milliseconds and an accumulation of one. The reason why I'm using such a uh, small uh, time for the exposure of the laser is because I'm going to be, I'm going the measurement is going to be very fast. The stage is going to be very fast. So the intensities for this measurement uh, is uh, low. So what we use for this type of measurement is a different uh, detector. Uh, it's a CCD detector, but in the mode of uh, uh, EM. So that is the elect uh, electron multiplying. So that what it's going to do is just first is going to increase uh, the signal. It's going, of course, it's going to increase the signal to noise, uh, signal to noise ratio. And even we are going to be doing the measurement fast, it's going to be able to do a, a very clean uh, measurement. So we have the polymer piece. We decide all our parameters. We are in the mode to make the mapping. We are in the QRI scan mode. We choose uh, to make a lattice. So I just have to uh, drag the area that I'm going to do the measurement. And here we can see all the points. And this is just a lattice of all the points that are, they are going to be uh, measure. So I just decide to go 20 uh, milliseconds and then we go. So now the stage is going to move to every single point that I uh, decide. In this case, I'm using uh, eight points in the X, 18, and an interval of one micron each. So what we are going to do is just uh, move the stage and uh, the detector is going to be measuring in at each point. Okay. So 
So on, of course, I choose a very small area for this demonstration. Uh, and of course, you can do this in a larger area, especially if uh, using the multi uh, image. So in the multi image, we can uh, zoom in and actually create a larger area to uh, do the measurement. So especially this mode is designed for very larger areas than these uh, that I choose now. And especially for those measurements that it can take hours uh, to do it. And the measurement that I just did, it, it took 20 se 10 seconds since the moment it started to do the, the measurement. So, and then I'm just going to send this uh, measurement that I just did to our micro imaging analysis uh, software. Uh, in here, we can uh, uh, select the area that we are going to uh, use for the analysis of the image. So what I'm going to use is uh, part of our software that is called Analysis Wizard. And this uh, software was designed for those uh, users that they are really new in the uh, Raman analysis. And what we are going to have is just a window that is going to indicate the different steps that they are going to be followed to create the image. So the first step is truncation. And we just click OK. And truncation is just selecting the wave number range where the analysis is going to be done. A smoothing is going to smooth the data. Now we are going to do the noise reduction for the noise reduction is just going to create a model to reduce all these uh, features. Uh, and then we are going to do the baseline correction that is just uh, the correction of the fluorescence on each point that it was uh, measured. For each point that was measured is like something like, it is uh, 144, so it's correcting in each a point of the matrix where we took uh, the measurement. So when it's fin finalized, we just go. Uh, I know that I have two different uh, polymers. I click uh, two for the numbers of components. So the reason why I click two in this last step that is called create color distribution map is that in this part of the software is using chemometrics. It's is using the multivariate curve uh, resolution method that is just taking, uh, extracting what are the main features of that compose this image and it compose the spectra. We just select which is which are the the map and the software already make the map for two uh, different uh, elements or components, I'm going to overlap those two uh, maps, and I'm going to create the image for you. In the right top side of the screen, uh, we are going to see the two different uh, spectra, and actually these are the two spectra of the two different uh, polymers that I'm measuring uh, today. One is PMMA, the, the other one is polystyrene. But to have uh, all the other feature that is very useful to uh, look at the distribution of the of the Raman spectra over the image is this micro image uh, features. And what I'm doing is just overlay the Raman image over the visible image. When I click OK, I come here, and I'm just going to feed that uh, Raman image over the optical image. So if I increase this image, and actually this is a very cool feature, I can zoom in into the image. So now we can see the distribution of the two polymers in the uh, in the image. So, and actually, I can hover over the image, and I can see 
the two different spectra that I just uh, decide to map and I just uh, measure. Okay. So that is our first measurement. This was uh, QRI, that is Q, uh, quick Raman imaging. And we can create uh, the Raman image and the distribution of the different polymers. The next, uh, I'm going to remove this measurement. The next uh, measurement that I'm going to perform is the advanced spectra, uh, advanced search sample. And for that, I already decide the region that I'm going to be uh, measuring. I'm just going to move, uh, input the different uh, coordinates. So I'm going to move there. Let's see, um, around here. Okay, so let's change the focus uh, because the the different image that I have uh, have a different a uh, height. We have I know that these image in the that have circular shape are the polymeric beads, but these. Uh, cylinders of rectangles that we have here, those are the TIO2 uh, samples. So uh, to use the advanced search, just come and click uh, the advanced search. And I know that uh, uh, the software, I automatically identified the uh, possible candidates of uh, samples so we just need we can decide which uh samples we can measure and actually for that the software already decide what are the possible samples and that is done uh using the contrast between the background and the uh, the different contrast between the samples that means like the samples that they looks uh, a little bit darker, they are going to be recognized as a possible sample. The other uh, feature that is uh, basic and is the first uh, parameter that we are going to find is the size of the sample. So I already decide that my uh, range or my threshold is going from one micron to 78 microns and that is what is was identified here so in this moment i can uh, ask the software to uh, search and give me what are the uh, different possible uh, candidates so actually i just want to measure these five here so uh, this uh, area are not is not for my interest. I just can remove that. This other sample, I can remove this and uh, this. It can I can remove this one. And this big one. And remove it so I have only five uh, different samples. Uh, I can refine a little bit even more those features and I can uh, click in refine and uh, when I refine I have even more options to analyze a different particle. The user or researcher that they are uh, working with the particle characterization, they're going to be focusing in, in different parameters like size, area, uh, the perimeter that is the the length of the external shape of this of the particle. We have different uh, parameters like the ferret, horizontal diameter and vertical that is uh, just related to the different axes and how long are those axes of, of, a, of a particle. 
aspect ratio and RGB uh, values that is what is used for the contrast. So we can uh, the user can even play a little bit further with every parameter to the, for the selection and characterization of the sample. When I click OK, now I'm going to have a sample one with five different points. The points are highlighted in red. Again, I'm going to open the parameters for the advanced, advanced search. And I already have uh, the different uh, points. Now I change the exposure to one second. I don't I don't have the need to go fast. I just can go on to the location, do the measurement, and get the uh, uh, Raman spectrum. And the same, I'm going to be using the same laser, same uh, grading, but now I change to a uh, pinhole of 100 that is smaller. It's going to have, uh, we are going to measure less fluorescence and also uh, We are going to have uh, less fluorescence, less Raman is going through the uh, through the objective lens, and finally to the slit and the detector. So Okay, we measure different uh, samples and we can do uh, the next step. We can do it before or after we do the measurement. That what I'm going to do is just uh, add the uh, different, uh, I'm going to identify what are those particles that I measure. And for that, I just go to the uh, method is a spectra search. I'm going to browse, and this is something that this JASCO software allows is to uh, have the JASCO uh, Raman database, or the user can create its own uh, database. Then we upload, and uh, automatically they were uh, identified based on the uh, different. Uh, a spectrum, a spectra that had been uploaded. So it was identified that there is TiO2 and there is a SDPM, uh, high uh, density polyethylene, and also the PMMA, and not the other particles are a, a titanium dioxide. Okay, so this is the second sample that I measure. Uh, the next sample that I'm going to measure is the uh, geological sample. And for this, I'm going to change again the height uh, because this sample is quite high. I'm going to input the different coordinates. I need to lower the stage. And actually, what we are going to be doing is just what I mentioned before is just look at an sample that have a different a a, a rough a surface, and what I'm going to do is just uh, take the image is the first step, and then uh, create a uh, a stack image of the different heights, and with that, uh, then I'm going to perform the measurement. So I can uh, remove uh, this measurement, and I can now do the focus in my uh, geological sample. Let me input the other coordinates.
So now I'm going to use the 20x uh, objective lens. And now I'm going to construct this a uh, surface uh, image so and here what we have is what we call our multifocus image and we can look in the 3d view And actually, this is the surface that we are looking at. So actually these, uh, and let me I just turn in to put it, try to put in the same position that uh, we are looking now. Uh, so what we see here is just uh, some incrustation of uh, calcium carbonate. I know that this uh, Y part here has some calcium carbonate. I know that it have, uh, if you can see, the sample is not flat, it's not a uh, mirror-like, it's not polished, it's really rough uh, surface. So actually we can change uh, some of the parameters to look better into the surface of the sample. And if we change, click, I'm going to close this window. Now we can see that that is uh, how uh, actually in 3D how the surface looks like. So trying to measure this surface with uh, uh, conventional Raman system, the image is not going to be in focus. As a consequence, is going to be really uh, challenged to do this type of measurement. So since this sample is a, a geological sample, geological samples are fluoresce, a, a they fluoresce. What I'm going to do now is just uh, change to the red laser. So as you can see in the bottom, uh, the, this is just a reminder for the user. All the letters are uh, changed to red on the bottom. You can see that the uh, laser is 785. Uh, I already uploaded. I have a file with the parameters, so I just need to upload, and I'm going to do it again. I just need to upload that file that I already decide that is my geological sample. And I already did that, so you don't have to uh, try to find out those parameters again. If you find an optimum uh, set of parameters, you just save. The user can save that as a parameter file, and that is going to be uh, stored, and you just can call it uh, later. Uh, so for this uh, measurement, I'm going to lattice, I'm going to standard, and I'm going to click here SSI. I have uh, intervals. Now the intervals that I choose, they're only uh, 10 by 10 micron. Uh, I'm going to choose this area. I can zoom in here. Let's increase a little bit the light to see a little bit. Uh, this is the multifocus image. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit more, choose this, the, uh, the sample. We're going to decide what is the uh, lattice. And again, 
let me close this one. I have these here. And here we have each point where it's going to make the uh, measurement. So I need to update the, uh, the optical path uh, because it's changing from uh, the 532 to the 785. But uh, what we are going to be doing now is just changing and doing the measurement in each point. It's going to move or up, down, and now it's going to make the measurement in the X, Y, and Z uh, uh, coordinate. So in this case, I just choose a very uh, short time and also a, a few accumulations. But of course, uh, it just uh, depends on the user to decide which a, a parameters works better for you to create a better image. So. So what we're doing is just measuring in each uh, different point. And just going to uh, this peak that we can see here, there when it goes to the white part is just this peak close to 1000 uh, wave number is the peak for uh, calcium uh, carbonate. And that is actually what I'm interested to measure. So, Actually, if we are measuring these and the stage is not moving in the uh, C and, and, and Z direction, it's not going to, uh, we are not going to be able even to register that a uh, small peak in the uh, thousand, uh, close to the thousand wave number. And of course, since I'm measuring in the, with the red laser, the 785, we can see that this uh, slope is really uh, low here that is characteristic of just uh, 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 red lasers. So nevertheless, uh, this is the image. Uh, I'm just going to show the image. I already have this measure with uh, several, uh, the same region that I have before. And this is just the, uh, the same uh, tool that I used before is the analysis wizard. And actually the peak, and after I remove uh, fluorescence and everything, I this is the peak that I'm interested. I'm, I'm just, I just have the measurement done. Uh, do uh, the time is just uh, for the demo. I just showing how it's done. But at the same time, I just want to say like, a, choosing the right parameters, maybe longer time exposure, we can have uh, an image that we have a different, uh, we can see clearly different faces, and this is the car, uh, calcium carbonate. And actually, if I, uh, if I hover over that uh, region, I can see that this is the peak of calcium carbonate. And actually, for this sample, that was the purpose, identify what our the what is the structure from the chemical and visually uh, point of view identify what is that a uh, uh, what wide uh, phase so uh, with that I just want to uh, summarize this uh, demo. Uh, with this image, also what I did the uh, uh, the QRI QRI is also very effective for pharmaceutical tablets. Uh, this is a tablet of uh, 10 millimeters in diameter, and this was done uh, measuring like 30,000 uh, different uh, points. 
the image that I used for the uh, polymeric beads, it was just something like 144. It took me something like uh, 10 seconds. But for a sample, like a pharmaceutical sample, it would take something like 50 minutes or 60 minutes for this sample. But with other instruments that ha doesn't have the capability of uh, quick Raman images and automated stage that is and uh, fast uh, detector is going to be really challenging. And actually, uh, some of the user take hours, like 24 hours or more, to make a measurement like this. With the JASCO instrument, it's possible to do it in a few uh, minutes. Summarizing this uh, demo, well, I used three different techniques. The first one that was the QRI, that is the fast mapping. We have an automated stage that is moving fast. We have a short time that was set up in milliseconds, and we're using an EMCCD detector for, to increase the signal and to collect a lot of data, especially for the MCR uh, software that it needs a uh, a lot of input to create those uh, nice Raman images. We can do small samples that the sample that I measure and also large uh, maps like the one that I show for the pharmaceutical tablet. Uh, for the advanced search function is very useful for particle um, samples, especially microplastics, and it can be identified while you are doing the measurement or when the user, after the measurement is done, it can be identified. And the surface scanning image, it can be used for tilted, uneven surfaces, rough surfaces, like a geological sample. With this last slide, I would like to invite you to our educational resources. We have uh, past webinars. I'm just putting the link there. We have a lot more than, I think this is the 10th, uh, webinar we, that we have made. Uh, I didn't want to put them all of them. Then later you can click in that link and go and visit or revisit those uh, webinars. We have ebooks and tip and tricks, posters, check the knowledge base where we have uh, different uh, journal uh, articles. Uh, collected in our, our website for you to uh, look at the different uh, references. And the last is, this just came this week, is our uh, study on COVID-19 using uh, circular dichroism uh, spectroscopy. With that, I just want to thank you to everyone. Next week, we have the webinar with Dr. Sherry Hemmingsen on Tuesday, June 30th at 2 p.m. And we are going to be looking at an application of fluorescent spectroscopy. The, the other fluorescence uh, webinar was excellent. So I, I strongly recommend you that you look into, into these guys. So with that, I just want, uh, if you have questions, uh, please uh, uh, feel free to, to ask. Uh, I have a question. The first question is, can the SSI create images like AFM? Well, do you know that AFM and Raman are totally different uh, uh, principles? They can be combined, but uh, remember the AFM use a uh, cantilever tip that is uh, Hoover hovering over the surface and, and actually the Raman is collecting the data. But yeah, the the SSI, what it's doing is just uh, collecting or creating a all in focus image and then uh, measuring each point at each specific uh, coordinate. So there is a question here. Say, could you determine the hydrogen, carbon, or 
and or oxygen carbon atomic ratio of different polymers by dividing the intensity of different Raman wave number. Well, you have uh, each uh, frequency is correspond to a functional group. So you can have a relation between those different uh, functional groups. And actually our software can do, uh, do different calculations like peak height, uh, area, and from those peaks, you can have the ratio of the functional groups. And from there, uh, decide what is the uh, relation between the different uh, functional groups. So we have another question like, what is the tallest uh, sample the standard stage can handle? That is a very good question, but uh, usually it's uh, several uh, millimeters. Uh, but of course, if you want uh, the uh, really tall, you can go to the deep stage. I can I can double check that I can get back to you. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting question. You say, can you use this Raman imaging for surface enhanced Raman? We can we can use the surface and we can of course we can do surface enhanced Raman and what it remember that what is enhancing the Raman signal is the substrate where the sample is placed and usually these substrates are made of uh, gold nanoparticles and what the na gold nanoparticles are doing is just increasing the Raman signal to measure these usually liquid sample. So yeah, it can be done. Uh, this is a good question. It's like regarding the sample holder, apart from a glass slide, do you recommend offer any sample holder specifically for liquids? Uh, for liquids, we can offer uh, what we call our macro uh, accessory. And usually what we do is to put the, the liquid in a vial and the macro is just a macro lens that is directed to the vial and it's just uh, doing the measurement. That is one way to do it. Well, when switching from one laser to another, does it include filtering this fluorescence from the total signal and just measure the Raman signal with high signal to noise ratio? Well, this is a and and uh, this is a something that I didn't mention in the in the demo, but uh, we have patent uh, software for to deal with the fluorescence, and we have two different uh, ways to, to go to deal with that. Let me uh, go back to the software really quick. Actually, uh, I didn't talk about the different uh, other function of calibration, but if you can see in the screen, it's a fluorescence correction. Our software can do the correction while we are doing the measurement or in the software when we are analyzing the the samples we have uh the raman options and we have fluorescence correction there so actually when we switch the laser uh of course we are going to change to the filter that correspond to that laser but at the same time remember that we can we can correct the fluorescence and at the same time uh, samples that fluoresce a lot are recommended with red laser or near IR lasers. Yes, uh, the 
the presentation, the slides and the recording are going to be available soon. Uh, usually our team, they send it to you in a couple of days. Uh, so you are going to have that. Uh, when you are doing nanocrystal suspension, maybe the question is, can we measure nanocrystal suspension and single crystal using this technique? I think that the way to go is using SIRS, but that is something that I, I think it needs to be measured before and before I can tell you yes uh, as a definitive answer. But I think, it, yeah, the way to go is with SIRS. Well, uh, can ramen be used to quantify glycans for a glycosylate proteins? Well, the glycosylate proteins are uh, are very easy to uh, characterize in FTIR. And actually, I would say that uh, because both techniques are molecular vibration spectroscopy techniques, I, I would say yes, it can be done with Raman. Uh, but the question is which laser can be recommended? I think that in the case of proteins, I prefer to go with a red laser, a 785 or 1064 laser. Yeah, it's, uh, in other of these seminars, uh, can you demonstrate the use of the instrument which I demo a uh, macro with a liquid sample? I think so. It's, uh, this is the first uh, Raman demo, and I, I think that I just covered very few things. So I, I think that we can visit again the Raman combined with FTIR. I think that that would be a great... Uh, idea. So I have another question. What would be the laser wavelength recommended for concentrations in millimolar excipients? I uh, it is going to depend on the sample, but I can tell you that I have measured very small concentration in the in the order of picomolar with the instrument, and I did it. I did it with a 785 laser. So if you ask me, I think that would, it can be done a millimolar. It depends on the sample, but if it's something biological or protein or something like that, uh red laser. Okay, I think uh, I have all the questions in the panel. Uh, uh, just want to. Okay, there is one last question. It say the Raman signal depends on the excitation laser uh, used. Uh, yes, it's very important. Usually, if if you are doing some research. Uh, I strongly recommend uh, either uh, 
describe what laser are you using and uh, uh, if you're reading, if you read some uh, Raman uh, journals and some publications, everybody's going to cite what is the line. It's very important. Okay, so I think that is uh, all what we have. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you. Uh, everyone to attend today. Also, um, the recording and slides are going to be available soon and you are more than invited for next uh, webinar. Okay, thank you.